Hello and welcome to another video in the series on regression analysis. Today we're going to generate some random data and take a look at what our linear models function looks like. Just going to use this as an example. It's a very useful way of approaching data and learning about new things. So we're going to start off just by generating X data on an even scale. We're going to use R for this example. We're going to have a designed experiment where we're taking observations between 90 and 110. And the relationship we're going to study is one where y equals x is the true relationship, and we're going to mix in some random noise. So the length of x is 21. That's a nice term to have. Our y is going to just be x equals y. So our equation is simply y equals x plus random noise. So each y though is going to be random noise plus we're just going to add a standard normal to this our norm gets a standard normal. Now this is going to give us a vector of random numbers to add to our vector of x's to be our y data. So the length of this vector needs to be the length of our x and the default mean and standard deviation for our norm is 0 and 1. We're just going to use that as our example right now. A plot of y versus x shows us our data and if we want to do a linear model of this we say linear model of y versus x. And we see that in this particular case, the slope of these data is not exactly 1. It's 1 1.0199. The intercept is not exactly 0. It's negative 0.6473. Because of that random component that we have added to the data, it's not exactly what that theoretical model were. So that randomization that happens just in the normal observation process has given us something that's not exactly the true underlying nature. What if we did it again? We generate the random data through some other random sample and look at the linear model for that. This is a little bit different. This one has a slope of 0.97862 and the intercept a lot closer to zero as it turns out, negative 0.01616. Let's take a look at this plot similarly and it looks a little bit differently from the previous one. These are these data. We can of course plot our line And there's our best least squares line for these data. Now we know that we generated these data with a true model in some sense that y equals x plus a random component. But the slope was not a slope of 1, but a little bit off of that. Well, how close is that slope on average? If we generated data that was supposed to have on average a slope of 1, on average would, it have, would those samples have a slope of 1? Well, that's an interesting question. And we'll explore that with a little simulation next. Next we're going to actually do that simulation. So in this particular case, we're going to build a loop. And we've got a vector slope sim that is going to ultimately hold the simulated numbers that we generate from each one. So for each of these, in this case 50 samples, we'll do what we just did y equals x plus our normal data. And here's some gobbledygook to take the slope from that particular model and store it into this vector. You'll see how that works. Now if we take a look at what our slope vector looks like, we see it's 50 numbers. And if we just eyeball those, they're all around 1. So we've generated, just like we did our two by hand simulations a moment ago. We've now generated 50 of them to take a look at, for each one of these, what was the slope value for that particular one. This is a simulation of what we call a Monte Carlo simulation. Well, what does this look like? We can plot the density of slope. And it gives us a kernel density estimate for these particular 50 values of slope. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like it has a mean of of 1 or so. Standard deviation of oh, maybe 0.05 or so. Let's take a look at what these are. The mean of slope, as it turns out, is 1.001. Looks like on average it is in fact 1 or thereabouts. The standard deviation of slope looks to be pretty small. And if we look at that divided by the square root of 50, that gives us the standard error for that. So plus or minus 0 0.005 five is where we think that uh, slope would be. So we have reason to believe that in fact the mean is somewhere near one for these uh, random slopes. That makes sense, but what we've established here is that 
at least approximately, in fact, theoretically we can prove, the slope from our least squares estimator is in fact an unbiased estimator for the true slope in linear regression.